Hi, I'm Broward County Commissioner Stacy Ritter. Today on Coffee with Stacy, it's not really coffee today, but we're continuing this new thing we're doing where we're going on location to various areas around Broward County and showing you some of the stuff that you may not have seen before. Today we're at the Broward Center for the Performing Arts, which is in fact partially funded by Broward County, and we're gonna take a little backstage tour of the theater and see some things that maybe you've never seen before, and I certainly know I never have. Come on, come along with me, we'll take a walk. Out here. would come out of the top of the center oh. and trickle down over the building. So they're creating wow, that's, that is neat. a visual image through their own local image. Okay, and is that um, possible? Te we've technical? already developed it. Wow. Um, so there's a, there's a company in Austin called IDEO. And uh, we went to them and kind of said, we want to create some real memorable experiences that are part of what we do in this renovation. They came up with all sorts of things. One of the things they came up with which was amazing. We're still trying to figure out if we can do it effectively. They came down and studied people in the building and how they went to shows and what they needed. And they're people that um, IDEO as a company is, is really a design firm. So they design products for people that work better. So these are the guys who looked at kids' toothbrushes and said, well, what they really need is a bigger handle. Everybody thinks a kid's toothbrush just needs to be a regular toothbrush smaller. But what they really need is the bigger handle. So they, they think that way. But they've also gotten into uh, people's experiences and designing experiences, so we brought them in to talk to them. And they came down, they actually worked as ushers, um, talked to the patrons, they did some focus groups, and they came back and one of the things they said was, you know, you go to a theater and at the end of intermission, you got the chimes to get people back into the theater. Mm -hmm. And he said, it seems like for a performing arts center, you can do something that's so much more so they, as a prototype, they had um, the motion sensors from like the Xbox, Xbox Connect game, they, you know, the one where uh -huh. it detects your motion. Right. They mounted them on the ceiling in their, um, in their lab up there in Boston. And then they developed um, fish. What they're saying is, you know, you're down here, you've got an nautical theme, you're connected to the river and those kinds of things. So they projected moving fish they built a fish that would actually swim like a fish and, and project them on the floor. And when intermission happened, the fish would be pouring out into oh, the no. lobby, projected on the floor with all the people. And then when it came time to go back in, the fish would go up and start poking at your feet. Oh, that's amazing. And start heading back into the thing. And they're like, you could also like tap on them and a message would come out that says, you know, time to show begins or that's things like that. Incredible. So we're working on have people leave going, you've got to go down there and, you know, see this in the Broward Center. So. That sounds unbelievable. Yeah, so it'll be fun. We're still working on all that <laughs> So, um, so out here at the bar, so we've been down in Carpenter to play some of the, uh, you know, the different looks of the interior will be updated, but, um, you know, once again, we're starting with a really good, uh, yeah. when Phantom came out, it was the first time that they decided to make Broadway shows on a scale on the road that they were in New York. Oh. I, and so, right. and so, Phantom actually was responsible for stage house expansions at theaters all across wow. the country that had been built, you know, in prior years or that were former movie houses built in like the twenties and thirties. So this one, though, was designed right when that was happening. Mm -hmm. So it was designed to accommodate that. So we don't have to expand our stage oh, in this wow. but we do have to. I mean, if you look at that, 
looks old, doesn't it? You can kind of get a sense. I mean, you don't have to be a technical person to say, wow, I think maybe there's some updating that needs to happen here. But the thing I like to say about the equipment and systems that are in the building behind doors over there, these things were specified back when the fax machine was the big technology. You know, it was late 80s. And, you right. know, so we're making do. Um, but we've got to rent a lot of equipment that we need, and that increased operating costs. And you know, when artists come yeah. out of the top 10, no. they're kind of expecting certain things. So, so um, will the new equipment be smaller? Does yeah, it take oh, absolutely. You're, you're, you're based, if you think of going from sort of analog to digital, you can get a lot in less space and also energy efficiency. So, for example, lighting fixtures that you know we use across the we're stripped right now of, of everything that you're getting ready for um, the ballet. Mm -hmm. But the lighting fixtures that we have here use 60% more energy than the ones that are out there now and available wow. to us. So, you know, we come in and we can replace all this equipment. We can become more energy efficient. More, much more technologically savvy, have the ability to do a lot of things that artists expect these days. So somebody sits here during the entire performance? Yeah, so see, there's a lot of communication here, headset communication. So it could be somebody f who's traveling with the show who mm -hmm. would call the show from this location, or it could be one of our own stage managers who's working with them to coordinate things happening on the stage with people who are at sound and light locations out in the hall and on the other side of the stage. So what will the knobs and lights do? Well, you can see some of them are labeled. So there's uh -huh. things like house lights, curtain warmers are also house lights out there. Somebody's so a Steve Jobs fan, I see. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd laugh to see his <laughs> logo on this equipment. Um, but there, you know, there's work lights, Orchestra things like that. These are all obviously uh, <coughs> audio tie-ins. But a lot of that can be done now with electronic switching and all these kinds of things that make it a lot more efficient, a lot easier to use, and a lot easier to tie into the equipment that's coming in off the road. Mm -hmm. So these guys are coming in with the latest technology, uh -huh. and then we've got to get it between them and us. And it's is a there lot another more one of these on the other side, or no? Okay. No, but there is a room full of um, dimmers, amplifiers, things like that that all need to be replaced too. The dimmers we have here, they don't make anymore. We actually have to have place the dimmers we actually have to have them manufactured. Wow, that must be very um, expensive. It is expensive. So it's it's time to just go through it all. I don't realize how big it is when you're sitting down there. This is a unique perspective, isn't it? Yes it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, these lift systems in here, let's see this part of the um, floor can also be part of the stage or it can go down into the pit. Mm -hmm. And all of the systems in here are also screw jack systems that don't have parts anymore so we actually have a machine shop make parts when we have something that goes wrong in there so we're going to replace this with a new hydraulic system that is up to today's standards has parts available and of course is new so it's not going to fail on us are the seats original the seats are original so but they've worn really well for 20 years you can say that about a lot of the things in the building i mean we've put a lot of time and effort into maintain things the right way um, but, for example, now some of these seats have been sat in 10,000 times, wow. um, you know, in the lower orchestra. So while they might look pretty good, they're not feeling as oh. good as they used to. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we'll go through and comprehensively replace all of the seating in both of the theaters as part of this. And then carpeting and wood refinishing. But Original it, carpet, too? Uh, we've replaced the carpet twice in 20 years. And um, the lighting... The replacements that you're talking about, does mm -hmm. that include what's it out? It includes all these out here, um, especially these out here. So these are the ones that are typically going to remain in place um, that they'll t the road crew will tap into when they come here and use those, including our sound system that's out there that also needs to be replaced. Um, and then the, they might bring in some of their own lights in here mm -hmm. that are already programmed to do what they want and then tie into what we've got out there. But those are the ones when I say lights like that now are available yeah. that use... 60% less energy mm -hmm. than the ones we use here now. So, and when all the lights are on in this place, we're drawing some serious juice. Oh, so, yeah. um, we can be a lot more energy efficient with these improvements. So, the two, um, what look like glass windows? Yes. Are people sit back there? No, those two right there are um, where the sound and the light. Right, uh, that's what I meant. Equipment I mean, I mean, are. Oh, equipment. Are. Oh, okay. Yes. 
So um, those two locations typically will have technicians in them, and then we have that's a mixed location right behind. That's the what I meant. Those are for people there. actually work. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, in okay. those locations. So yeah, is there equipment like this up there? Yes. Which um, would also be have upgraded. All or upgraded. All tied in. I guess it's just actually scrapped and starting from scratch. You're we'll, not really upgrading. We'll spend about four million dollars wow. on sound and light equipment alone. So. But the sound um, in here is amazing. The sound in here um, is great acoustically. Mm -hmm. So, from a design standpoint, they created a great hall, and you know, in one sense, you almost don't want to mess with it because of that, and so we won't. But amplified sound, the systems are old, okay. the speakers are getting old, mm -hmm. and that's beginning to deteriorate. So that's what we want to go through and replace. So, if you look up there under the balcony, those grills mm -hmm. have sound systems. So there's speakers in those locations, and all of that needs to get replaced so that the distributive sound sounds as good in the back as it does here up front. Um, other than that, besides a few cosmetic things, seat replacement being the big one, we're not going to make changes to the space because, again, they, they got it right. Oh, it's a beautiful time. space, too. I remember so. the first time I walked, in, I walked in here, I was just awestruck yeah. at how yeah. gorgeous it is. Yeah, and it really still is today. Yeah, so. it really still is. Even every time I walk in here. I think that this is uh, something that we should be really, really proud of. This theater is amazing. Part of our mission here is to make this a destination that people want to come to. Um, and make it sort of a signature destination in our economy. And one of the things we've got to capitalize on here is our proximity to the river. The River Walk Park access to the downtown and just sort of the whole tropical context of um, Fort Lauderdale and South Florida. So out here right now we want to improve our connections down to Riverwalk Park, Esplanade Park, and the river itself. So we're going to install some seating terraces out here and then going right here which will take those catering and community event functions out of the abdo place them out here on the river. Um, and then there'll be a small bar, of course, that services the terraces. So it'll be a nice pre-show kind of space to be, post-show possibly as well. And we'll get our community events, receptions, and everything out of the Abdona River and then out here so we can use the Abdona River for performances. So, um, you own everything to the river then? Nope, just all? down to the, um, about 10 feet beyond the bottom of the stairs. Okay. And I think that one of the things that Right. to enjoy That's it, exactly have it. a drink or an appetizer before the, and, and sit out and enjoy the... We want to give them the space yeah, to do that. Yeah, you know, and, and I think that's something that is definitely different from, from the Broward Center. Because we know that um, people want to be able to park once right. and, you know, come in and maybe they can grab, they'll be able to grab appetizers here at this bar if they want. But also, we want to create better connections down the street. We've got great restaurants down the street. See the river house be active again. Yeah. You know, pretty soon you've got a whole destination here that really becomes very attractive. So we want to do our part to create those connections and provide those experiences that people are looking. Do for. the local restaurants that are on summer sheet um, do they partner with you guys to do like after oh, yeah. theater dinner special or and pre-show? Yep. Um, so we do promotions with them. Um, if you went down to one of those restaurants, they'd be able to show you what our schedule is. Wow. You know? So. They know when shows are coming, they know how many people to expect. Um, so it's got, as you can imagine, a huge impact on those restaurants oh, yeah. on the street. Um, well, it should. Definitely. But we try to coordinate it because at the end of the day, that's part of the experience that our people are having. So we want everything to work really well. This is your spot. I do. Yes. Yes. <laughs>
You're never too old to so play with blocks. That's the way we feel. Whoa. You guys hear the music? Oh yeah, you know what that means. It's dance with grandpa time. Now we'll do it. Mexican headband, the juggler style. Here we are, two Americans doing the Mexican hand dance with English boards. All the while thinking in French with German accents. Ole! which is a real jewel in Broward County and is actually partially funded by the Broward County Board of County Commissioners. Don't forget, you can call me in my office, 954-357-7003 with any questions or concerns you might have about what's going on in Broward County. You can also reach me at sritter at broward.org and you can follow me on Twitter at Stacy Ritter. We'll be back with another Coffee with Stacy, and maybe we'll be someplace else on location in a, 